he was in a very fragile state, uh, severely anxious, depressed. Um, I worried about suicide. The gaming industry is one of the highest growing markets in the world, currently valued at a staggering 75 billion and only on the rise. With 64% of the US population currently considered a gamer, the platform gives people the opportunity to immerse themselves in a culture inept of judgement and the pressures of everyday life. Whether it be the online format of video games, with battle royale classics such as Fortnite flooding the scene, or a physical game of Dragon Ball Z, allowing gamers to interact and form a community, gaming culture certainly has its benefits. My name's Georgina, and even though I'm not a gamer myself, Today, I'll embody one as I seek to find out both the benefits and the dark side of gaming, throwing myself into a culture I'm not familiar with. I'll be going to Level Up Gaming, a gaming community who hosts regular tournaments and look to promote gaming in a positive life. But also, I'll see how painful it can be living with someone who has a gaming addiction and the effect this has on both themselves and those around them. So join me as we delve deeper into the world of gaming addiction. To find out how people become addicted to gaming, we first need to see why people start playing in the first place. That's why today I'm at the Level Up Gaming shop in Charminster to find out more about the gaming industry and why it's so popular. Rather than online, Level Up focuses on the physical aspect of gaming, board and card games, giving that feel of social interaction amongst the players. With tournaments hosted every Thursday and Sunday, it not only gives people the opportunity to compete with one another, but form friendships and bond over similar interests. They even gave me the chance to join in with one of their most popular games, Dragon Ball. After I inevitably lost, I spoke to some of the gamers at Level Up to find out why they started gaming and how this love has remained so prominent over the years. Um, yeah, gaming to me is, is quite a big sense of community, but also I found that it's an escape. So whatever you've got on going on in real life, it's a complete escape out of that. You get fun from gaming. Gaming's fun, I meet new people, I have... I'm going to say fun again because it's fun. But, um, get excitement and also happiness, I guess. It just makes my life now. It is more of a lifestyle choice than a hobby now, to be fair. Um, I've done my fair share of selling my soul to the devil. So gaming to me it is no longer it's a lifestyle choice. It's Yet despite all the positives gaming can bring, there's always the underlining fear of addiction, and this can have both serious, mental and physical effects on people. Not for me personally, but yeah, you see people take, take things the wrong way. Um, there was that horrible incident recently in the some esports event where a guy shot those people because he lost, which it's really sad, but again, everything has a dark side, so. In a study by Springerlink, 41% of people who play video games use it as an escape from the real world, and 7% of that class as dependent on games. In a separate NCBI study, 11.9% of people were found to have gaming addiction symptoms. But what do these symptoms really look like? The symptoms of gaming addiction are Unusual preoccupation with the idea of getting back online to play. Self-imposed isolation in order to guarantee uninterrupted play. Feelings of irritability and restlessness when not playing games. Lying about the amount of time spent gaming. Persistent headaches caused by too much screen time. Diminished personal hygiene and poor diet. Of course, the symptoms suffered by an addict are horrible. But to fully understand the extent of the issue, I spoke to Elaine Yuskowski, whose son used to suffer from a gaming addiction himself. Um, so, how was it, um, without getting too personal, how was it seeing your son go through this? And how is he now, more importantly? So, for me, it was quite shocking. I saw a whole lot of signs that didn't add up. I asked a lot of questions. I knew it wasn't a drug or alcohol problem. I, I just didn't understand why I was seeing all of these changes in his personality and, um, and his physical appearance. 
uh, when I did finally understand what was happening, uh, uh, my six foot two son had dropped down to 127 pounds. He had tremors, he had uh, tics, he, was, he had greasy hair. He, he smelled like a homeless man, quite frankly, because he'd stopped um, grooming, he'd stopped thriving, he was barely eating. He was literally gaming all night long until he would pass out and then sleep all day, and he had stopped attending university classes for months. So it really took a toll so, on his whole life. It was quite traumatic. Um, it was very worrisome. He was in a very fragile state. Uh, severely anxious, depressed. Um, I worried about suicide. Um, he was in a lot of denial about having the addiction. He was willing to see a counselor for the anxiety and depression. It took a couple of years with a lot of relapses and uh, a lot of hard work and, and a lot of uh, heartache before he finally came to terms with the fact that he needed to stop gaming. Gaming addiction is just the same as any other addiction and it should be taken just as seriously. From this journey that I've been on, I've learned a lot. I went to an actual gaming place and it was so much fun. It was so nice to see what kind of community can be made, friends literally for life that you can make. But it was also quite scary talking to Elaine about her son. And even though we didn't get to interview him, it felt like we experienced his addiction firsthand. If you ever feel like you're falling into addiction, whether it be gaming or anything else. There are always people to help you. There are numbers, emails, online counsellors. Just make sure that you get the help that you need.